Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to effectively use the split out node inside of NA10. So first I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to show you what I have here. So as you can see over here, this is, I just made up this JSON over here that has just has a bunch of different names. It has people's uh, just made up addresses, hobbies, and you can see over here that I also have another array with the city, population, average income, and such. Now, if you look closely over here, you can see that this people is the name for an array. And this will be considered as a single output. Within it, there are multiple items, 10 to be exact. So, we can use the split out node in order to get access to each individual field and basically split it out into multiple fields. Why would you want to do this? Well, let's just go over here for example. So say I want to work with the field name. Now, the problem is, is that if I want to generalize it, so let's say we put it into a loop block and I only want to use the, um, the field name. If I go ahead and drag this one here, you can see it copies the personal info dot name, but you can see that there is a bracket here with a number in it. This number represents the array position of this input. So when you want to like, let's say loop through items, this will not work properly. So the best way to do it is to ba basically pass in this array to extract all of the items. So let me just go ahead and put people here. So Let's go ahead and now you can see that we have split it out into 10 separate items. So I'll just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So you see, now we have 10 individual items. You could also do the same if you wanted for city summary. In this case, if I collapse this, it'll be 6 items. So we'll get 6 outputs over here. This is extremely useful if you want to easily handle and manipulate your data. Now, you could also um, combine other fields into here. You can do the use include over here, and you can see you have all other fields, selected other fields. Uh, the, it just All other fields just basically combines everything together. And then selected other fields, well, you can drag a specific field over here. Let's say I want to input the record count. I'm just going to go ahead, put that into here. And now if I do that, you can see we still have six outputs because we have six uh, fields within city summary, but we have an additional field input, which is the metadata record count. So that is just one of the things you can do. So now that we covered both of those, now let's get into some of the properties or the options that you can add to this. So I'm just going to go ahead, select no other fields right now, run it. So you can see right now that we have the six individual JSON fields over here. Um, however, we can actually give these J individual JSON fields a specific name. So you can click destination field name and you can just call it um, city We'll just go ahead and call it city uh, district, for example. Just whatever, just put a name, whatever it is. If we go ahead and run this step, you can see that now it will make a sub JSON that again contains our city population average income, but it will basically title this JSON with city district. So that is the purpose of using the destination field name. There's two other fields we can use, disable.notation. So what does this do? Well, let's just say, for example, if we pass in city summary, it will just do the exact same thing. But now, let's say, for example, I'm going to do city summary with city. So instead, if I pass this in, you can see that there's a dot notation for dot city. This is because every single time that you're going within a sub section of a JSON, you use the dot to say, hey, I'm opening up a new JSON. So normally what this would output here would just be Springfield. But now if I go ahead and enable disable dot notation, you can see that there's actually no output. Because in reality, what it is actually looking for is a particular field where the name is this whole name. 
So if instead this city summary was called city summary 0.city, it will then return this whole thing. But because there's no specific output with this name, it will go ahead and ignore all of it. So that is the purpose of the disable dot notation. I don't see much use for it, uh, but maybe there are multiple fields that have very similar um, field names, then that could potentially be useful. So we're just going to go ahead and disable this. The last one over here is the include binary. And what does this do? Well, you can see in the top left over here that we have schema, table, and JSON. Uh, these are just all the same way of representing the incoming data, just in different structures. However, sometimes you will have a fourth input over here with the field called binary. And the thing that I can think of off the top of my head is, for example, if you're using attachments, it will make that a binary. And if you want the binary then to pass through to this output, you can then toggle this option on. So that is basically how to effectively use the split out node. This is basically when you want to convert a single output item and extract all of the fields within it. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and I will see you in the next one.